Зарядье – первый крупный парк, созданный в столице России за последние полвека. Он возник как новый смысл и как новая функция для уже существовавшей, но пустующей территории в самом сердце города. Открытое горожанам и туристам, современное, многофункциональное, технологичное общественное пространство стало итогом работы большой международной команды. Эксперты, принимавшие непосредственное участие в создании Зарядье, поделятся, как разрабатывался проект парка, чем он живет сейчас и каково его будущее. На сцену приглашаются Петр Кудрявцев, партнер бюро City Makers, модератор Дэвид Базульто, сооснователь и главный редактор Арк Дейли, Мэри Маргарет Джонс, президент, старший директор Харгривс Associates, Сергей Кузнецов, главный архитектор города Москвы, Чарльз Ренфро, партнер Диллерс Кафидио и Ренфро. Григорий Ревзин, партнер КБ «Стрелка». Павел Прихлеб, директор парка «Зарядье». Марс Газизулин, генеральный директор «Мос Иншпроект». Добрый день, уважаемые друзья. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear friends. Uh, we would like to welcome you to this uh, session. Zarete is a symbol and is a model. Strategic choices to consider the redevelopment of the city center. And we have here usual suspects, so to say. Uh, we've been here before. My name is Piotr Kudryavtsev, and I'll be moderating this session. I am the head of the uh, Urban Planning uh, Commission in Moscow, but uh, most importantly, I'm the uh, participant to the International Consortium, which designed Zaryadi Park, and it's my special pleasure to see all of my colleagues that we've been working together for the last four years to make this project a reality. Yeah. On a separate note, uh, before we begin, I would like to thank um, our audience for this and to thank you dear colleagues for this beautiful concert hall we have the members of the design team which has made this amazing architecture uh, piece and and the head of the Mars Gazizulin and Sergei Kuznetsov the chief architect and Vladimir Blotkin who is also here the architect of this project simply because we have always uh, been developing these two venues, the concert hall and a park, in parallel ways. We've been helping one another, we uh, were able to listen to one another, and we've tried to do our best in help one another. Both projects are breakthrough projects, and now it's obvious that this concert hall is a reality, and thank you for that on behalf of our international consortium. It is important uh, for us that since the opening of this park, there has been um, a lot of attention of international press. Among other things, we've we've worried, we've been concerned, but the press gave us very good and I would say positive coverage. And the general discourse was about different issues and aspects of the park, our landscape, in architecture, and social. But generally speaking, it's a very positive uh, case and story. In this sense, we've relaxed, but it's also important to us uh, that the park was a part of all kinds of international um, uh, awards, architectural ones, landscaping ones and uh, even the very specialized ones and for us the very first award that we've received <coughs> Its Arc Daily mm, portal mm, uh, award was especially important to us because it has revealed that what we have been doing throughout all these years was right, was important, and <coughs> was accepted not only by Russian communities and Russian experts, but also by international architectural community. <coughs> So, it's my special pleasure that today uh, we have David Basulto attending our panel, one of the co-founders of the uh, ARC Daily and the chief editor. And I would like to ask uh, David to share 
uh, about this award and what criteria um, are of this premium of this um, award and why in your perspective Zariadi Park was able to win in this nomination. Thank you. Um, thank you, Peter, for giving me the opportunity to bring this external view on what Sariai de Park and its impact is. Uh, and to, to put it in context, Ardeli is today the most uh, used architectural platform on the internet, serving thousands uh, of architects every day, providing them with great knowledge to help them uh, address this challenge of the rapidly growing urban population. Um, and in this position, we have a big responsibility to, to let them know what are the trends, which are the projects that are moving the arrow of architecture. Um, and to do so, among the big amount of projects that are out there every day, uh, we decided to establish the Building of the Year Award 10 years ago. But we decided to do it um, taking advantage of what the internet can offer, uh, distribute networks, uh, embrace globalization, not with a, a small group of experts only. So we reach out to this collective intelligence of hundreds of thousands of experts from all over the world to recognize these projects. And during the years, the, the process has been very enriching because this uh, collective intelligence not only recognizes the, the fantastic works of practices such as OMA or Zaha Hadid architects, but also young emerging practices in very particular places of the world. And this phenomena is not just about popularity, it's something that we have been researching, researching with the University of Colorado or with Ken Gokuma Lab in Tokyo University on how the distribute uh, selection of projects is changing the perception on what are uh, positive models of city making, positive models of architecture, very away from these big poster icons that during the past decade uh, was where every city was after for projects that are much more related to the site and to local conditions. Um, and Saria de Park won the Building of the Year Award in the public uh, category uh, this year that is, it was a very competitive one because it presents projects, all public projects, in cities such as Copenhagen or Seoul, recognized for their, their urban development. But you could see something in common between all these projects, the redevelopment of waterfronts, repurpose of transport infrastructure, redevelopment of city centers, showing that these are the pressing issues for architects around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, by looking at these signals, you understand why Sariade Park was the winner. Uh, it is a good synthesis of all these issues. But Saria de Park is not just the singular project. As the mayor of Moscow show, it is part of a process, a process that I have been very happy to see since I met you many years ago when this start, and that it shows a, a strong commitment from its leaders, from the mayor, from the city architect, not only to, to create this piece of architecture, but also to open to create <coughs> competitions that can enable international consult consortiums to take part and to bring this knowledge to be part of the development of Moscow and also shows a commitment to the citizens to improve their quality of life and to bring everybody together on this public sector, private sector, citizens and uh, even the educa educational institutions. Mm -hmm. So at the end we can see that Saria de Park is an important milestone along this process of uh, improving the quality of life of Moscovites. Mm -hmm. David, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, it's really important that he, in the nomination of public spaces, you've decided to give award to Zariati Park, and the park was was able to receive the Grand Prix, the the main award. And again, for us, this whole process was quite complex, frankly speaking. But it's really important to us that uh, it's uh, the Russian partners in the person of the chief architect of Moscow have been proactively supporting this project and they've been not only our moderators but more specifically our partners who have been making decisions about the issues which we were not able to solve. And I now would like to give the floor to Sergei Kuznetsov, the chief architect of Moscow. And as far as I know, Sergei would like to show us some video. Thank you. Yes, we do have a video which we would like to show you.
Ladies and gentlemen, since Zariadi has become a symbol, a symbol of many changes and the uh, symbol of new attitude, a new approach to the urban development and to, to the architecture, and our architecture is a priority. And uh, now we've been observing yet another grand event, which has become a symbol of changes nationwide, nationwide and in terms of the changes of real attitude to Russia and Russia's attitude. We've done a short video which will highlight these two important events. Can we please uh, put it up on the screen and then we will continue. Mr. Sabianin has mentioned today in his presentation of the impact of the external environment and the transformed environment to the perception of the city, thus creating certain uh, preconditions for the people, let's say, uh, to spend their time uh, with, with good benefits. And we all know this phrase that the environment is forming one's uh, consciousness. And I believe it is very important. And it's a big joy for many people, for us on the stage and for people in the audience, those who have been a part of this project, I, I believe that we all have been very happy to be a part of these changes. And actually, Sergey, I can say that at the moment when I saw um, uh, under the glass crust the Iceland's uh, fans, when when 2,500 people dressed uh, identically and they've been chanting um, whatever they've been chanting under the glass crust, uh, you know, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, I remember ever since I was a kid and I was attended football soccer games I've seen a lot of people in the military uniforms on the stands and now we have people who are dressed alike but dressed differently and I believe that this is the main outcome and the sign of changes that we are witnessing and we understand this would not be possible without these kind of projects well the year passed by and uh, speaking of the Zariadi projects and the role of Zariadi Park can this project become a certain landmark uh, project uh, or a benchmark project when working with international competitions and international architectural community when doing this urban um, projects. You know, after a conversation with the Speaker of our Parliament, Mr. Volodin, who uh, told me that the story history of Russia uh, is split now uh, to before Zariadi Park and after the park has been built. I don't know what else can emphasize the park more, but there are certain pivots which today could be felt, could be seen, could be touched every day. They are material. And this is um, um, personification of the work of the ideas of very many people, and they are like those beacons like David was saying, that we are identifying the trends. We're letting people know what is important today. Let's pay attention to that and let's see where the world is moving. And I believe that uh, in our own eyes, that this is the trend when the uh, government and the society 
uh, are not conflicting. Uh, we're not like a boss and subordinate relations. We're doing something together. We want to live happier. We want to live more comfortably, where the joy uh, of uh, people is a, the highest priority. And these categories would not even be comprehensible in some recent past. I remember those times, I'm quite young myself, when you look back into Soviet period of our country, and even the initial post-Soviet period of the country, it was a totally different mindset among the people and the public. But I I am involved uh, in the project, and as the same it goes that we all uh, praise our own swamps, we all praise our own um, locations, but even if I distance myself from the desire to give all the high praises to Zaredi Park and to move into the opinion of a professional community, we know the research which was done by Yandex, and it testifies that Zaredi Park is the first venue uh, which raises m the biggest interest from the people who are coming to Moscow from outside. And the foreign uh, tourists find it more attractive than, than Kremlin, than all other venues in Moscow. Moscow. People are searching, uh, for example, in Yandex for Zaryadia more than any other sites in places in Moscow. And it has become the pivotal um, point and it has become the landmark story. It has shown all of us that we have the new uh, point, we have the new um, beacon, and we are moving now towards a uh, very progressive megapolis, and our society is changing. We've done this video that you've seen now, which shows that there is a very close correlation, instant connection. And uh, we've had uh, 10 million visitors here in Zariatia. And uh, this emphasizes that people like this place, people want to be here. We get instant feedback, and it doesn't take 200 years from a university to a city. It happens uh, instantaneously, just like that. And I believe that, yes, this explains the importance of what is happening more than any words. Yeah, the speaking of time, my partners in consortium have always been amazed in Mary Margaret Jones and Charles Renfro. They've been always mm, amazed of how you can do sometimes something, mm, something very slowly and sometimes incredibly fast. This whole project had some peaks and concentration at times, and then all of a sudden it would relax and stretch in time a little bit longer. And indeed, it all worked out the way we wanted it. But the main question, I believe, for the leader of our consortium, for the Charles Renfro, the main question is just to what extent what has been um, devised and conceived as the project of 2013 as a part of competition, just to what extent it has become a reality. What worked out? What did not work out? And Charles is the kind of person who, let's put it this way, on one hand, he realized the realities of our lives here, economic ones and political ones and social issues. But on the other hand, he was the head of the very strong international consortium, possibly one of the best in the world. So what worked out, Charles? What didn't work, in your opinion? Thank you. Um, and thank you, Sergey. Um, I think the thing that worked out best was international cooperation. From the very beginning, this project was founded on a kind of trust between the leaders of the city of Moscow, the mayor, Sergey, and then our entire consortium, which is made up of people from around the world, and some of whom are sitting here today. And I think that what was exciting about that is it was in direct sort of defiance of what most of the public around the world thought possible. That Americans, or a team led by Americans, could come into a place like Moscow and actually succeed. And the reason that we were able to succeed as well as we did is because of the trust that we formed as a group. The people that, that ultimately designed and detailed the, the competition here, uh, several, um, several firms from Moscow, did their best to interpret our designs um, and ultimately detailed things maybe slightly differently than we would have done in the end. But the essence of the project as one that's completely open to the public, that's um, free to move, a, move around, um, uh, day and night, 
that accepts a kind of naturalistic landscape that's been not seen in Moscow before and has merged that up with a kind of architecture, a uh, kind of wild urbanism that we say that was, that was a, an essential part of the design that was understood from the very beginning and carried through to the very end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know that uh, with dealer's cafeteria, you have a, a different um, a dealer's cafeteria rent for that is, you have all kinds of projects all over the world. And of course, we would really like to know now, do you have any specifics of working in Russia or with Russia? That experience that you have received uh, in these five years or four or five years working in Russia, what was this experience? What, um, what has it taught you in terms of doing international projects? Thanks. Of course, we, we have uh, grown on to, to do projects in uh, the UK, in Europe, in China. Um, and again, what, what I think we've learned here is that uh, the first thing one must do in starting a project is get everybody to, to be on the same page about what the goals of the project are. And that's, that's something we must continue to work on. Uh, on all our projects. Um, the world has become a much smaller place. We travel a lot. Um, our carbon footprint is something we should uh, try to, to pull back a little bit. But it also means that projects that happen around the world or uh, in your own city have many of the same issues to overcome, um, and that is getting everybody to believe in the project together. It doesn't matter whether it's around the world or uh, next door. So those are lessons, lessons we learned here can be applied to any project that uh, we can achieve anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, no. But indeed, uh, but indeed the fact that the park turned out the way it was initially conceptualized. It's about this very strong concept and a certain new typology of the public space. And my next question to Mary Margaret Jones is still, is it a new typology? And if yes, what's the specific features of this new typology? And this um, number of little details, different aspects of the park, how how did you, did you succeed to put it all into one organism on such a very small and limited territory? Thank you. Well, it is a new typology, and it's a new typology that's implied by the term wild urbanism. So to create a place of gathering, a, a place that is urban, a place that is of the city, but a place that at the same time is sort of magically not of the city. So you have both respite or oasis uh, within the city context, and yet you're exposed to the sort of awesomeness of this city at the same time. So it's this blend of uh, public space that's active and as Liz Diller said in the previous uh, session, a place where you don't do anything, where you don't have to do anything. In, in my profession in landscape architecture around the world, I think that parks are being over-designed and over-programmed with many, many things to do. And I think, in fact, having a place of nature in the city is enough. And I think the success of Zariadia Park proves the value of landscape and nature as a destination and as something that unites us all as human beings and that we all hunger for. And I would say that the working on the project with that, as Charles said, as a kind of common goal, had a lot to do with the friendships we've developed over time, mm -hmm. the pleasure of working here, the many times we've been here, how much we've enjoyed it, and, and working with the people we've worked with here and making lifelong friends. So mm -hmm. I think it, it's not that small. It's 35 acres, so I mean we do parks half that size and try to achieve the same thing. So it, it is a little bit bigger, but it also had buildings, it had structures that had to be accommodated. There, there was program that had to be in a in a building. So to make those buildings subservient to the landscape in a way, are folded into the landscape and thereby creating a topography on the site. Um, was, I think, what is unique about this project and what, what makes it uh, so special. And then, of course, as Charles said, the planting, letting the planting have a wildness 
is something we spend a lot of time as a team talking about with our locals. I have to mention Arteza, our local landscape experts who helped us a lot. But then the people <clears throat> who executed the park, um, embracing this idea of not making a manicured landscape typical of other parks in Moscow, but rather a landscape that is set in motion and will evolve in, um, in a natural way was something that uh, I think is, is not usual, not typical. No, we're interested in that. Very interesting. And actually, my next question is to Charles and uh, Mary Margaret at the same time, in this magical moment when the concept was born. How was it happening? How the concept was born? Because on our part, of course, it was easy for you. You were in New York, you were far away, but you, you were together. We were here stationed in Moscow, and we were bombarding you with a lot of information, norms, you know, building codes and different events and different new inputs. But then, all of a sudden, in some point in time, I remember this feeling, I still remember this feeling, um, that uh, we we had begun to receive from Charles these unique sketches, the very first sketches with these um, illustrations, which are illustrating the concept of this uh, wild urbanism with birch trees bursting up and this pavement and this uh, uh, crust under which you have the green grass and then this uh, and edgeless field. How did it happen, this concept? At what moment this concept was born? Thank you. Um, thanks for that question, Peter. Um, we like to, to grow our projects from their location. Um, we like to say that we try to tap into the DNA of a site and make a project emerge in a very natural way. And here, um, we were very interested in, uh, because it was a park, in understanding ideas about landscape, and I'll let Mary Margaret speak to that a bit more, but the idea that, that, that landscape, that green, would be part of this design without question, but that also this green had to inhabit one of the world's most recognizable, iconic urban spaces. And so there was there was a thought that if you could merge those two things up, sort of an I iconic Russian landscape with the iconic site, and make something of a kind of hybrid, a, a surreal, a, or sort of super real hybrid of both of them, a place that's both more natural and more urban, it would be unique to the world and unique to this place. And that's sort of how it emerged, the, the concept of wild urbanism. Mm -hmm. bringing the, 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 the nature that surrounds Moscow right to the heart of Moscow. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, that we had to contend with that Mary Margaret alluded to was uh, there were many pieces of built um, uh, program that had to be accommodated in the park. And we wanted to make sure that the park maintained its openness and its greenness uh, for its totality. And so we came up with an idea that the, the park landscaping would consume the built environments in a series of uh, stepped uh, terraces. Therefore, all of the building program would be um, concealed and uh, un underneath the green surfaces of the park. And that was, that was a revelation the day that we came up with that. Mm -hmm. I, I would say we really built on um, и еще, как говорил Чарльз, мы отталкивались от площадки во многом. А площадка у нас какая? Есть, конечно, наклон. А в сторону юго-западной стороны идет довольно сильный градиент. Поэтому мы сделали несколько складок. И вот именно в этих складок... Really sort of take in like waves, the buildings, as Charles just mentioned, become part of those folds. And this, this slope also enabled us to, to really evoke four landscapes of Russia. So a northern landscape, a sort of tundra landscape, 
a steppe or a meadow landscape that is open, a forested landscape, uh, and then a lowland landscape where there, the ponds are, the sort of wetland landscape. And so that enabled us to use the characteristics of the site to express something about Russian landscapes. Um, and I have to say, you were part of that in that you were sending us not only codes and strict information, but also literature, poems, feelings about landscape. We were quite entranced with the way Russian fairy tales, Russian music, Russian literature talks about forests and talks about nature. So this idea of creating the birch forest was something that, that came out of that. So it was both what the site was telling us and what uh, the history of landscape really in Russia mm -hmm. was telling us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Margaret. I have a question for Grigory Revzin. Actually, I know that Greg Grigory has been following this process of creating the park from the very start. Of course, he was fully aware of uh, the history of this place before a decision was made to turn it into a park. So what do you think? Uh, this process, a five or six year process, is it unique or it can be rolled out, scaled out, can it be used for some other new powerful architectural uh, cases in Moscow or elsewhere in Russia? Ah, thank you for your question. I don't know if our audience is aware of this fact, but we are currently sitting in a room. The eight people that came up with the idea, they are here on the stage and two of them are in the audience. This is an absolutely unique situation uh, where something worked really well and it's unique and it's uh, presenting this park. Th this is what is actually happening and all those people are here. <laughs> But you know what they say, when you have a victory, many people claim to be behind this victory. Well, I don't claim that I was one of those people. I represent Strelka here. Strelka prepared a program, a tender for the park, but I was not involved personally. I was not part of this work. But we have people here, sitting here in this room, uh, who participated in this program from the very first stage. Well, you asked if this can be repeated elsewhere. This program was excellent. Uh, in great detail, it described everything that the park should have. Of course, uh, with the cityscapers, uh, Renfro, those programs, they, they came up with something very different, something of their own. Of course, they did have something in common. But, you know, I thought it is very important to have a very detailed program which would later be used as a statement of work. I used to think this was for architects. Now I realize this is more for the city authorities. This is the point. After you approve this document, they understand what kind of park they're building. Of course, there were a few changes. We had to remind them about it a little bit, but at least this was a starting point. This 60-page document some, is something you can start working with. Then, three or four years ago, I was here at the Urban Forum. I don't remember if the tender was over by the time. I gave a lecture on architectural tenders and I said this doesn't work, this doesn't make any sense, this is totally ineffective and it doesn't make any sense. There is no upside to it. The problem was you cannot protect the winner immediately after the tender is over, colleagues would uh, complain and say no this is the wrong the wrong uh, offer that one you should use my my solution instead and construction companies would always complain oh, we hate this design it's terrible let's change it who cares if it won well Strelka I can remember two examples no two things we removed from this program. There was a 
two-story parking space under the park we wanted to get rid of this parking area and I'm happy that we but this is not something that I did at uh, some point they decided to call this park Russia Russia and they almost gave this name to the park eventually we were able to uh, protect the name Zaryadia and this is something I contributed to I said let's not call it Russia let's not call it Russia let's just call it Zaryadia th th this is my contribution that's all I did but the most important thing here is that this project that won and the tender act was actually quite good but it's not that big of a deal to have a good tender the most important thing is that they were able to protect to defend this project the winner and eventually it was implemented very close to its initial form this is the miracle this is uh something that everybody uh, should celebrate especially sergey kuznetsov of course this is an absolutely unique situation listen i'm serious <laughs> round of applause <laughs> Uh, we all understand what it is to have U.S. architects, uh, but this came at a time when we had a very tense situation in relations with the U.S. And people were complaining, you let Americans build in the heart of Moscow, in Red Square? Let's use our architects instead. There were a lot of influential people who said that. And at a certain point, this whole project was on the verge of collapsing. I did not have much faith, but Kuznetsov was confident. He said, I will get it done. But I think he had his doubts too. So, I think those people are real heroes. So, you're asking if this can be a role, used as a role model for other projects. Well, you need all these factors to come together. You, then you can use it as a role model, but only in a sense that today we have no doubt that our officials, government officials, and all the people uh, in Moscow who come here and they love the park they believe that this is exactly what they wanted to get they don't recall how they wanted to change that they have this feeling that this is exactly what we wanted to build this is it they don't remember any longer all those arguments and disputes and debates that we had so we can use this as a role model we can show it to others and explain See, we had this tender, chief architect was in charge of it, and eventually this project was implemented and this is how it worked. But if you have all sorts of changes, complaints from cons the construction company, and you start making all sorts of changes, you will end up with something totally different. So this is one way you can use this as a role model. But I think this case is quite unique. We don't have similar cases in Russia, in Moscow. This is a unique space. It's just a whole new level. You know, in the late 1990s, in the early 80s, we had new architectural stay. And for example, Vladimir Plotkin was the man behind this concert hall. Back then, it seemed that uh, Architecture, that's okay. That's something we can do because it's uh, something on a limited scale. But things around it don't even start. Now it's different. This hall is nice. It's really good. But if you look at the park, it's just a part of the park. It's just the same as the rest of the park. But if you go outside, that's something different. So that's why it's a unique situation. Thank you. Thank you, Grigori. Yes, I agree. You can see some unique parallels between the global geopolitical situation and the park because yesterday the presidents of our two countries had a meeting and we saw a kind of thaw, but three or four years ago this seemed impossible. And uh, the park had similar ups and downs. And as far as your role, Grigori, is concerned, I can tell you that after we won uh, the tender, we expected all sorts of uh, critical comments, uh, media reports, and there was uh, an article in the 
in uh, Commerzant, and I remember they said that on the whole this project is fantastic. And when we saw <laughs> this article, uh, we felt relieved. We breathed the sigh of relief. Sergey, right, Grigory is a very modest person. Uh, he said he was not directly involved. Well, I have to respond to that. Actually, I'm very grateful to him too. And I think when we had the most difficult point of time right after the tender and uh, there was a fierce debate, fierce public debate, uh, we had uh, um, tensions with the U.S. Uh, were running high and people complained, uh, demanding that we use the Russian architects instead of Americans. Grigori spoke out publicly and pro defended this project. And his opinion is very important. He is a very influential person. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not flattering, but you are the most popular architectural critic. Uh, maybe even the only one we have in Russia. I don't know. I don't know anybody else. And your opinion was really important. But you know, the most funny thing in the same piece in Commerzant, uh, it was listed as. Uh, information threat because uh, this uh, it seemed like it was uh, too critical of the government questioning whether it was possible for the government to make right decisions the way the article was written you should uh, uh, hold on to this opportunity yeah but anyway what Grigori said back then was very important to us and I still remember it and I think this was a turning point even and um, now everybody agrees that this project was successful, but back then uh, uh, we had many foes, many opponents, and just a few allies. And uh, we had a lot of criticism coming from every side. Yes, yes, your, your concept was very unorthodox. Right, and uh, the fact that the mayor supported us and trusted us, of course, was uh, the number one, number one factor. But this kind of support, Grigori's article, they really helped. Otherwise, I don't know what it would have been like. Yes, of course, mayor's direct support, the fact that he got involved uh, personally, and uh, we were also very fortunate to have good partners. Uh, we, we we had Mars Gazizulin. Kalina Gardushina, at, at some point, they became our agents, in a positive sense, of course. And uh, we were able to infect them with this idea, get them on board, and uh, right to the end, they uh, fought for this construction site, and they did their best to help us implement it. I want to ask Mars, this was a very difficult process, so maybe you could tell us what worked and was there anything that you learned, some lessons that you learned? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your question. Actually, the most difficult part of this project was we spent a lot of time on uh, politics and we just had a little time left for construction. And the team that got started on uh, Luzhniki, Luzhniki Renovation, actually, Sergey and I also worked very together very closely on that project as well. So the team was divided. They had to take care of that project as well. And then they also had Zaryadi Park. So we only had two and a half years left to work on the park and three years for the concert hall. The concept itself was very interesting a lot of complex uh, issues, but we had a clear understanding that this park will be well received and people will fall in love with it. Muscovites as well as visitors. It was important for us to implement everything that architects had designed. And despite all the difficulties and despite the shortage of time, we discussed this situation and we worked together to implement the project the way they designed it. 
they were some difficult points and sometimes uh, we thought that maybe we could get rid of some of the elements like the glass mountain we studied this matter we talked to Carter a world-class leader in this matter but it would take too much time it was too complex and eventually we used the Russian company they manufactured all the structures and this uh, mountain is very nice we understand today that it's a real beauty it's nice yeah. if it's raining outside or you have a concert and the bridge again many people criticize this why do you need this bridge which leads to nowhere goes to nowhere 18 meters hovering over the river but today people love to go there people enjoy it uh, you always have a lot of visitors on the bridge so I think this really worked because of uh, this very good teamwork we worked together very well we had very good liaison officers like uh, Mr. Kudryavtsev whatever question we might have we would call him he would always come and help resolve all the issues this was always our number one priority to resolve whatever questions we might have very quickly and even though we had to fix some of the things we had parallel designs we had to change some of the solutions we would always accommodate them and uh, we just wanted the park to be implemented the best possible way so yes the political situation was complex uh, actually this is what I was going to say you you stole what was on the tip of my tongue but it the situation was not easy and it's right next to the Kremlin and you have Americans working on it but like you said yesterday uh, there was uh, this meeting between our two presidents so, so hopefully our two countries will um, improve their relations and I hope we'll have a lot of joint projects together in the future thank you thank you very much actually we should understand that everything we've designed everything everything we've built together our teams work together and we do all this for Moscovites and people who visit Moscow the guests of Moscow and uh, two years in advance well, we had Pavel Terhleb joining our team. He is currently director of the park administration. He became a member of our team and this really helped us because whatever questions we might have on uh, park maintenance, we always were able to resolve those very quickly together with Pavel. So I have a question for Pavel. First, this new detailed social-cultural program for the park. Do you think that the physical aspect of the park is consistent with it? And can you maybe tell us uh, what happened in the last uh, 10 months since you opened the park? Uh, Good uh, afternoon. Thank you for the question. I will um, go back to the process of building the park. The success of the park was uh, largely defined by this environment uh, in the whole team, the builders, the consortium, the operational team. It is very important that we always have been in, have had open lines of communication and the dialogue and we were able to anticipate some problems and to cut down the risks uh, before uh, they became too uh, large. It was also um, applied to the tr transit of the concept. After, th after this product, um, which, and, uh, which was won, and then what we've done now, certain steps have been made, and uh, they've been rooted in the social and cul cultural model. In the park, we've got this multimedia complex, which um, received some international award. Initially, we did not have this in our um, concept, and some colleagues were 
afraid that it may have a negative impact on the park. But now we can see some success and the guests are very happy to visit these totally non, you know, culture projects which are non-recreational in the modern format and they share about the Moscow in Russia and the history of this place. It's a very good addition which, uh, which enables visitors to feel very comfortable in the park despite of the weather conditions. Uh, speaking about the climate, we're not living, you know, in the nicest climate. We have the great scientific lab uh, with biotechnologies for the kids and some programs which have been developed with the scientific institutions which enable us to work with uh, with the underage um, um, the children and the school children. So it was all a uh, device. It was all reflected in operational documents. We've also put it as a part of our financial model and now we are working according to this plan. All of our capacities are utilized. In May, we've launched the last uh, special theme um, attraction, Ice Cave. And the, physically, the concept of the park has been fully utilized. And now the main focus is shifting towards uh, f from the uh, physical part of the projects into creating and building uh, this unique uh, cooperation with visitors who come to the park. And we are trying to not only to provide services but also trying to involve them into our life and we are we have done in the 10 months of our work over 100 concerts in the big amphitheater in our pavilions we have the huge partnership program with the leading um, musical and theatrical institutions of Moscow we have the great number of public initiatives which are being used in the park we have the, a lot of people who come to us with different festivals and uh, festivals and and other corporate events and actually doing this uh, urban forum in Zaryadi Park it yet, it's yet another testimony that this uh, venue is really unique, comfortable. It's not only about recreation, it's about business, it's about innovations, and it enables the city of Moscow to show this very unique, uh, very successful combinations of different functions of different use in one location. And going back to our current results, I have to say that Zaryati Park, in addition to the unique uh, emotional um, signature to it, which is yet another complexity. There is a high demand and there is a huge success with the Muscovites and the visitors. Over 8 million people have been to the park so far. And for the territory of the 10 hectares with the unique botanical collection, it presents a challenge in terms of how to find this harmony between the high demand on one hand and maintaining botanical a legacy on the other. And we've seen that basically throughout this whole year we've had some temporary fences which have now have now been eliminated in the springtime, in the summertime. We can see the vegetation and the uh, park is working full-fledged, full steam. You can see the great landscapings and we are hoping that we will be able to withstand the pressure of this topogenic pressure and the park will be uh, continuing splendidly as it has been. My, my colleagues and Mary Margaret have been asking me before coming here, how does the park look after the World Cup? Because, you know, everybody was concerned that something may happen here because there was such an influx of tourists. Maybe you could comment briefly how park survived, shall we say. In fact, we've done a number of organizational events about the safety and security. We had additional shifts of employees. We've expanded office hours of the main pavilions to uh, to um, accept as many people as we could. And uh, service functions have been operational. Informational policies have been uh, adapted to the multilingual environment, uh, given the countries which have been presented at the World Cup. And we've tried not to do any fun zone in Zaryadi Park. And the multimedia screen was turned off because the park was pretty much, you know, occupied and loaded. So we tried to get rid of these um, extra risks. Uh, Pavel, thank you very much, dear colleagues. We are running out of time, but actually I would like in addition to our panelists and the speakers, uh, Grigory Revzin, David Basulte, I would also would like to thank uh, all kinds of members of our teams who I am seeing right now, Vladimir Plotkin, Timur Bashkaev, and um, Atrium Gulnara, 
Magpi uh, Polanski, Ruben Arakelian, and I am confident that uh, we have some more people from the team. But I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that this park is an outcome of the work of hundreds, maybe thousands of people, uh, all the way from CEO to chief architects to the simple builder. We are insanely grateful to them, and uh, we are hoping that now and from now on, having built this park, all of them will be coming here, enjoying themselves, enjoying their time here, and most importantly, to follow how the park is functioning. Because we, as the residents of Moscow and our colleagues from New York, we will do our best uh, to follow the development of the park and to try to make it better with each year. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. We're done. Thank you.